the generic geriatric cyclist. The generic geriatric cyclist climbs the Alpe de Zwift, or at least he attempts to. In case you're not familiar with it, the Alpe de Zwift is a virtual climb meant to emulate the storied Alpe d'Huez, an alpine climb that is often featured in the Tour de France. I'll be the first to admit that attempting to climb Alpe de Zwift is an absurd idea for an overweight 73-year-old man who's had his third substandard cycling year in a row. Actually, it's probably an absurd idea for many cyclists who are decades younger with double my cycling power. So why do I want to climb Alpe de Zwift? As George Mallory was famously quoted in response to the question, why do you want to climb Mount Everest? He said, because it's there. How can I even hope to climb almost nine miles up the virtual recreation of the most famous 21 hairpins in cycling at an average gradient of almost 8%? So I asked myself what I'd do if I were a pro cyclist. Like a pro cyclist, I'd do the obvious thing. I'd cheat. I can't make the mountain any smaller or less steep, and I wouldn't take steroids as if they'd help anyway. But what I can do is something called weight doping. When you sign up for Zwift, you enter your vital statistics. So instead of my real weight, which approaches that of a hippopotamus, I'll change the weight to what it was over 55 years ago, 155 pounds. Even with weight doping, climbing Alp to Zwift will still be close to impossible. But here goes. The fastest way to get to the Alp to Zwift is to take the road to sky route. There are about three miles of easy terrain to warm up the muscles and prepare them for the heavy lifting ahead. As if anything could prepare me for seven miles of steep uphills. Here we are on the warm up portion of the ride. I also did about a half an hour of flat riding beforehand just to get loose. I can easily imagine a point in this ride when I'll say to myself, what the heck are you doing, John? This is insane. If I had any sense, that point would come now. On today's ride, my realistic goal is to climb about 900 feet or more. If I do that, I'll get a good climbing workout. How long should this ride take? Well, let's just say I would need a haircut by the time I finished if I tried to do the whole thing. A pro cyclist can do it in about 45 minutes, a very good amateur can finish in about an hour, and an hour and a half is considered respectable for a first time effort. But all that applies to skinny young riders, not old guys like me. The odd thing was that I wasn't pushing a high, for me anyway, wattage. I was in zone two, where I do most of my rides. It only felt like I was riding in the red zone, not in the endurance zone. I finally understood the obvious. You use different muscles on hills than you do on flats. It's not that you're just fighting harder against gravity. Today's effort wasn't a stupid human trick and a waste of time after all. If you don't ride up hills, you'll never develop the capability to ride up hills. One of my goals for the continuing off season is to develop my climbing muscles, something I usually avoid. I'll test my progress by continually attempting the Alpe de Zwift until I can complete it, using my actual weight this time. I'll be returning to the Alpe de Zwift as well as the other hilly routes on Zwift throughout the indoor season. And whenever, or if ever, I'm successful, I'll make an episode about it. Also, I didn't take weight loss seriously enough. There are overweight people who have enough talent to compensate for much of their excess weight. I'm not one of them. Not focusing enough on weight loss was probably the biggest mistake I made in 2021. After the strong temptation to stop earlier, I made it to a thousand feet. 
So while I fantasized that I'd knock off the entire climb today, I'm happy with what I did. Remember, a journey of 3,000 feet of elevation starts with the first pedal stroke. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. So long and happy riding on the hills.